finale with Potomac Beads. Join me in making this Evelyn necklace as a choker, as a bracelet, as a longer necklace, and really have fun utilizing two needles and some two hold beads. Remember, if you do need any supplies, you can check the list below to shop with us online in the description there for links to potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. Gather up your materials, and you can even switch it up if you want to, and let's get started. To begin our Evelyn necklace, I want you to have two needles on one piece of five feet of beading thread. I'm using white .006 thread, and I have two millimeter pearls in that pretty lilac color, along with some iris duos in the metallic olivine, some purple two-hold lentils, some pink two-hold lentils, some nice opaque dark cream matte 15 OC beads, and then my clasp enclosure with my wire guards and my lobster clasp. I'm going to begin my necklace by having those two needles and dropping onto my needles my wire guard. So I'm going to take my needle and thread through one side of the, side of the wire guard and the other needle and thread through the other side of the wire guard. Your thread then is going to sit right and nice inside that little horseshoe shape. And then I'm gonna drop on my clasp. Now I will be coming back down the necklace as I add in my C beads along the outer edge. So I'm not worrying right now about reinforcing this clasp section. What I'm going to do to begin is I am going to just simply pinch that wire guard just a tiny little bit so the ends touch so they come together. When you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you have equal amounts of thread still on the end of your needle. And then we're going to begin into our diamond pattern and then into our iris duo. I'm gonna begin with my iris duo section and then we'll build from there. For the iris duo section right at the end here, I wanna grab one of my pearls on one needle, one of my pearls on another needle. You might have to spin them a little bit, those little two millimeter pearls, especially when you're trying to hold two needles. You can also do this with one needle. Two needles just going to be a little bit easier for you. Let those drop down next to your clasp, and then you're gonna pick up your first iris duo. You wanna make sure when you pick these up every time that they're facing upward. One side is gonna be flat, and the other side is going to be rounded. The first one, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna take one needle through the right side, and one needle through the left side. And just let those drop down right next to the clasp. From here, I'm going to add another pearl on either side of my thread and needle. So one pearl on the right needle, one on the left. When working with two needles, especially in simple patterns like this, anything you do with the right needle, you're also going to do with the left needle. So if you need to work with one needle at a time, go ahead and do two steps with the right needle, then go and do those two steps with the left needle and vice versa. From here, we're going to take our thread and needle and we're gonna crisscross through our first one of our lentils. We're using two hold lentils, but you can easily do this with other two hold beads as well, like super duos or mini duos and change up the pattern just a little bit as you get ready for your seed beads at the end. From here, we're gonna cross through our first lentil of our first diamond. This one I did the seed beads around, this one I kept exposed. That way we can see it kind of in action. Coming through, our first lentil is going to be a purple. The purple's always gonna sit at the points as well as at the end. Our pink are going to be surrounding our iris duo. One needle is gonna go through from the right to the left through that first lentil, and the other is going to go left to right, crisscrossing through. Because this is the first time that you're crisscrossing your needles through a bead, just make sure again that you have an equal amount of thread at the base of each needle. Pull that nice and tight, and you can see it's just going to sit right in the middle there. From here, we're going to progress down the lentil, adding one of our two millimeter again on the right and on the left. Because of the pearl process, you may even need to just kind of break them apart a little bit because of the coating process. And then once again, take your needle from the right-hand side and over to the left. That pearl is just gonna sit right on the side of the piece. 
the reason that I chose white thread versus green, even though I have kind of a florally theme for this Evelyn, is because of the thread being next to the pearls. So I wanted to make sure whatever color and thread was going to be exposed the most is going to be that near the pearls and then that cream seed bead. Same thing, that needle is going to go through the second hole of that lintel from the left toward the right. That's our first connection point. From here, we're going to add our next set of our lentils. Our next set of our lentils are going to be along with pink lentils. The pink lentils are going to sit on the side of the iris duo bead. So I'm going to add a pink level lentil on the right, followed by one of my two millimeter beads. Same thing on the left. Add a lentil. and then one of your two millimeter beads. If you don't want to use two millimeter pearls, you can also do this simply with 8-0 seed beads or one and a half by two millimeter rondelles will work as well. From here, we're going to reverse the thread and add our first one of our iris duos that's sitting the opposite direction in between the diamond. Because this is the first one, or the second one, we want to make sure that it's sitting upright. My needle and thread on the right hand side is going to go through that second hole of that white red luster lentil as well as through my iris duo as well as through the second hole of the lentil from the opposite side. Pull your thread and needle through. And then mimic the exact same thing on the other side. Take your other needle here, go through that second hole of your lentil, your iris duo, and out through the lentil you were just working with on the other side. So your thread is just crisscrossing in the middle, basically reversing the sides that it's sitting on. You see how it sits right like that? Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another one of our purple lentils. To do so, we're going to add, just like we did the pink, our purple lentil, followed by one of our two millimeter beads. We're going to reverse the thread through the second hole of that lentil, just like that. Pull nice and tight so you don't see a lot of extra thread. And then we're also going to add another one of our pink lentils and then go through your iris duo. And see how that just frames it out really, really nicely. Same thing on the other side, coming out, because again, anything we do on the right, we're also gonna do on the left-hand side. Adding one of my lentils, adding a two millimeter bead. Going back through that lentil. And then after you're through that lentil, once again, adding another one of your pink lentils and through to the other side. This time, because the lentil is already there on the left, you're going to go straight through and have your needle and thread exit through the pink lentil on the other side. That thread and needle that's already hanging out there, the one that was on the right, I'm going to grab and take it through that first hole of the pink lentil that I just added. So once again, we're just crossing our threads through our next set of beads. You can see that beautiful floral look. Almost done here. Going off the side here, we're gonna add another one of our two millimeter beads. Reverse our thread through our lentil. Add a new lentil in the purple color and over to the opposite side. Same deal here. Oop, my fault, I took it one too far. You're going to want your thread and needle to exit right before the purple. From here then, add my two millimeter on the opposite side here. Once that two millimeter is on, I'm going to sew through the second hole of the pink as well as the first hole of that purple lentil. Add 
At this point, your first diamond is complete. To get to the top here of my little flower, once again, I'm doing my two millimeter bead. Then I'm crossing through the lentil. One needle going right to left. And then a two millimeter pearl. And the other needle going from the left to the right hand side. This same pattern is just gonna get repeated over and over and over again. Now I'm gonna go in and create that connection point one more time. The connection point one more time is the exact same as our start. So coming out through that two hold lentil, I want you to add a pearl with your right needle. Make sure your iris duo is facing the correct way. Go through one side of it, add your two millimeter pearl, and then while I'm there, I'll add my purple lentil to my right hand needle, knowing that it's facing correctly. Needle that's on the left hand side gets added. One of my two millimeter pearls goes through the second hole of the iris duo that's already there. A pearl gets added, so this is just like coming out of the wire guard. And then I'm sewing through that same hole of that two hold lentil from the opposite direction. So one thread will be exiting on the right hand side and one will be exiting on the left. Once again then, we're just repeating over and over again till we get our desired length. Once you're done with your initial stringing here, you're going to repeat the same thing on the wire guard and then I'll add some jump rings for an extender chain on the end. Where I'm coming out the last of the iris duos, I take one needle and go through one way, one needle and go through the other way, adding a wire guard after my last pearl. I ended up with a nice choker length doing about 10 groupings of my diamond here. You can also get a little bit more length if you don't want to have to worry about more pearls by going in and adding some seed beads at the end and the beginning to the piece or even attaching chain to the back. I like the option to keep it short, short to wear it as a choker as well. So I'm going to take my thread and needle out the sides here the whole way till I get out one of the pearls that sits on the side of my purple one of my um, two hold lentils. So I'm going to take my thread and needle on both the right and the left, straight through the iris duo, straight through the pearl after the iris duo, and then also through the pearl after that pearl. So your thread and needle are going to look grouped up just like that. I have my left one here. I'm going to get my right one in place and then we'll start adding in some of our nice cream seed beads. After you're done coming out the two pearls that sit right after the iris duo, you're just going to do a series of some seed beads, three 15 O's, and this is optional. You can keep it open if you want to. Three 15 O's, then you go up through the pearl that sits on top of the lentils. Three more, so it's always just three, connecting the pearls that sit on top. And then again, once you get to that connection point, after adding your groups of three, you're going to go in and just sew straight across from one to the other, going through and adding in your thread and needle straight across basically four pearls and the iris duo. So you're going straight across here, all of these pearls right in a row through the iris duo through the pearls. You'll notice then that you still have that movement because of the connection there and your edges get just a little bit of seed beads from either side. I'm going to do it on the right side for a little bit, then on the left, switching back and forth, adding in that tiny bit of seed bead look. Once you're finished adding your seed beads to the end, you're going to come out the final piece here right near your pearls. With one of your strands, go ahead and reinforce that clasp going through the wire guard around the bend of the wire guard, as well as through your clasps, back through the wire guard on the opposite side, 
and then simply tie your thread ends together. Once your thread ends are tied together, just burn off the edges and your necklace is completed. On the opposite end, you can see that I added some of my jump rings in a chain link fashion. That way I can wear it as a choker or a little bit longer if I want to. Again, you'll just take your thread ends, completely knot them off. You can tuck your needle back together and then grab your thread burner and burn off that thread edge. Thanks so much for joining me in the creation of this beautiful Evelyn necklace. Remember, if you want to, you can add some chain to the back. You can add some more of your little diamonds here, making it longer, keeping it short, using it as a bracelet, and really having fun with this versatile pattern. Remember to make sure to comment below, as well as give your feedback if you're changing up, especially for the two hold uh, lentils to super duos or mini duos, changing up to a disc duo in the middle. Comment below if you've done any of those changes. It helps out the beading community a ton. So that way they learn from not only me, but from you as well. Remember also, if you haven't yet, subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. If you do need any materials to complete your Evelyn necklace, remember there's links below in the description to shop with us online. As always, you can post your pictures of your own Evelyn necklace in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. As always, thanks so much for joining me and enjoy your new Evelyn necklace.